a lot is happening here in Hawaii and a lot of stuff that you need to be updated on. If you're thinking about making that move or you're already here or, hey, look, maybe you're in the military and you got orders and you're trying to figure out what's happening in Hawaii. A lot of things are changing, right? A lot of things all around. And we're not just talking all this crazy stuff happening, right? A lot of things are changing when it comes to HECO, when it comes to developments, all this type of stuff and more. We're going to dive into it right now. <music> What's going on? Welcome to the Living in Hawaii channel. Hey, if you're new here, this channel is all about what it's like to live in Hawaii, what it's like to eat, sleep, play, breathe, the up, down, left, and right, Waikiki, everything, all that, and more. All right? If you're not new here, hey, welcome on back. Make sure you all hit that like button. It's going to help anybody else be able to find these helpful videos. Hit the subscribe button, and the easiest way for you to get notified when we put out a new video on this channel is to hit that notification bell. It'll send you like a little notification to your device, your computer, wherever it is, and you'll get notified that, hey, Living in Hawaii put out a new video. And look, we talked to so many people reaching out every single day about their move to Hawaii. Either they're making the move, they're thinking about making the move, or they've already made the move, and they're trying to find that place that best fits their lifestyle. You can reach out to, you can shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email. No matter what, however you're comfortable reaching out to us, we got your back when it comes to living in Hawaii. So like I said, a lot of things are changing, a lot of things that you need to be aware of, especially if you're already making that move and you're going to live in Hawaii, right? One of these things is that HECO has raised their prices and it's going to raise them again. Yes, again. So if you didn't know, look, Hawaii already has some of the highest or most expensive electric. When we're talking about kilowatt per hour, it has some of the most elect expensive electric in the United States. And now I've said this before in like our cost of living videos and those types of things too, but Hiko or Hawaiian Electric Company pretty much has it monopolized. There's other places in states like Texas, some of these other ones where you can shop your electric out here in Hawaii. You don't really have a choice. All right. You're dealing with Hiko. Even if you're going to comment and say, well, I can get solar, Ryan, you're still going to have to deal with Hiko. All right. There's really no way around it. Hiko is H-E-C-O. And that's just kind of the acronym that we call them. But they're going to be raising their prices again, all right, because they just shut down the last coal plant. So I actually wanted to show you this. You guys know that I love, I don't just like to get, like, I do like to talk, right? But I like to show you guys these things too. So I wanted to actually show you what's going on out here. So when this first came out, we actually made an updated cost of living video because this happened. Home prices are going up, rents going up, all these things are going up, cost of goods is going up. And so here we go again, right? Now, as you can see right here on this article by the Hawaii Tribune herald.com, Hawaiian Electric start preparing for 20% hike in residential bills. All right. As the Tribune Herald reported Wednesday, Hawaiian Electric is forecasting the residential electric bills for Hawaii Island rise about 20% over the next several months. All right. And this was uh, back in March. So, what happened back in March is my wife actually got an email and she's like, Did you know this is going up? And then she sent me the email and I was like, Oh man, here we go. Um, and so as if it wasn't expensive enough, you can even see right here, it says Hawaiian Electric issued a statement today aimed at helping customers prepare for the increase. How do you prepare for the increase? Are you going to, you going to give me a raise at my job? Like, what? I mean, how do you help me, help me prepare for this? You're going to tell me to turn the lights off and the AC, like, come on, it's hot. All right. Anyway, the increases we're anticipating are more abrupt than we've seen before. And on top of the inflation we've all experienced in recent months, I know they will impact the budgets of many households. That's Joe Viola. Senior Vice President of Customer Legal and Regulatory Affairs. Um, he said, we hope that by letting customers know what's coming, this helps households and businesses plan budgets and reduce energy use. <laughs> um, I understand that's your hope, uh, but yeah, you know, that's, you're not helping, <laughs> really. I guess it's better than just letting us know um, out of nowhere, right? Hey, look, your bill's up for this reason, right? So anyway, they're trying to give you some actions to take, right? Reduce um, the use of anything that generates heat, all right, turn off air conditioning or set it at 78 degrees. Um, use smart plugs, consider rooftop solar. Uh, shared solar will soon be available for customers who can't put panels on their own roof but want to share in the savings and contribute to Hawaii's clean energy transformation. So as you can see right there in that article dated back in March, they do have some things happening there. Now I want to update you on what's going on with it right now. So Oahu is just one month away from the closure of their coal energy plant in Kapolei, as it says right here. 
is the island's cheapest but dirtiest source of power is what they're saying. The cost of electricity after coal is still up in the air. You can even see at the top there it says power expected to be reliable but pricey after the coal plant shutdown. So it's already pricey. We can't even imagine where this is going to go. All right. So it says Hawaiian Electric said it will inform ratepayers sometime this month how much more electric bills could spike this fall. Uh, that's because replacement solar and battery projects aren't yet online and pricey oil generators need to be used more meanwhile. All right. And this is as of August 2nd. All right. This article. Um, so it says the final countdown begins and then at least on Oahu, there are these five projects coming online in 2023. One of them is going to be probably the largest solar and battery project for Oahu at least. All right. And then it says while waiting for those to come online, Hiko and the PUC said the utility can still generate enough power after the end of coal. Now they do uh, expect another price increase. All right. As we, so the first one that I showed you was back in March. And then this one is as of August, 2022. Um, who knows how much it could go up. That's why they're saying it's still up in the air. They don't really want to say it's going to be a 10, 20, 30% increase. Um, that's more of a like wait and see type deal, but Hey, look, it's not, it's not getting any better when it comes to those things right there. So how does this impact you? Well, this is something that you need to prepare for. If we're talking about your ideal monthly budget, and that's how we like to talk in terms of your ideal monthly budget, you definitely need to have this in mind. So for instance, let's say a typical 1200 square foot, three bedroom, two and a half bathroom house, townhome, whichever the case, right? But we'll just use those parameters, right? You can typically expect anywhere from a three to $400 electric bill. Obviously that varies. Some people in the comments, let us know, hey, how cheap or how expensive was your electric bill? Drop that down in the comments and let us know. You don't have to get into details about your house, but let us know like, hey, how or about range is your electric looking? Cause mine, all right, mine this summer has been up in the 550 range. Not happy about it, but hey, I got a family, we got kids, dogs, those types of things. So those are the things that we have to deal with. All right, what else is happening in Hawaii? Let's dive into some more. Rent is going up in a lot of places and maybe you're thinking about moving out here and renting before you decide to buy or you're going to be renting long term. Just a little disclaimer here. We do not service rentals. Yes, I am a real estate agent out here, but we work in the sales side of things. We do not work in the rental side of things. It's a little bit different out here in Hawaii. And that relationship is really between you, the tenant and whoever the property manager or landlord is. Now, they just talked about this recently, Hawaii being or Honolulu being in the third most expensive place to live in the country. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. And they also have some data and stuff, which I always like to show on this channel too, keeping you up to date with what's going on with the data, the analytics and those types of things, what's really happening out here and giving you the true numbers because I'm a real estate agent. I can show you what we see in the back of the MLS with the data and those numbers, right? Because this is all recorded at a higher level. So they are saying that Honolulu is now the third most expensive place to live in the country and rent's going up. We're not immune to it. It's, go it's going up all around the country, right? People took on heftier mortgages. People paid more for homes, right? And when these people are no longer living in those homes and they can't get that uh, monthly mortgage you know, covered, they're going to charge. We're charging more in rent or not. We're there. They're charging more in rent. So let's take a look at this article and see what they're saying. Here's an article from Hawaii News Now. They just put this out August 2nd. All right. 16 hours ago. And it says as housing prices soar, Honolulu becomes the third most expensive place to rent in the country. OK. And then as you can see, diving in here, they've got some data and they say that the analysis showed the median rent for a two bedroom unit in Honolulu is about twenty five hundred a month. They say about because this obviously fluctuates. All right. And it does say that that's 19 percent higher than the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. All right. And now it says somebody quoted this here, but Honolulu, 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 like a lot of parts across the country, has seen pretty uninterrupted rent growth throughout 2021 and 2022, said Rob Warnock, senior research associate at Apartment List. All right. In many cases, rent growth exceeds what we're used to seeing before the pandemic. All right. And then it says only Napa and Silicon Valley in California had higher rents than Honolulu. Wow. Yeah. So 
He even says the situation is bad news for prospective renters like Premi Simeon, uh, who is looking for a two bedroom apartment in downtown area. She hopes to pay about seventeen hundred a month. I actually just saw this video um, all on social media and everything like that. And it is hard and it is stressful because rents keep going up. Right. And then people are wages aren't going up. Right. People are making more money in those types of things. So I understand the difficulties of it. And again, I'm not picking a side. I'm just telling you and giving you the awareness of, hey, look, if you're thinking about coming out here and renting, it's going up. OK, so we got to consider those factors. But I also wanted to show you what we can see in the MLS. All right. Like I said, I'm a real estate agent. And so I've gone over to some data. All right. If you know me and you watch any of my videos, all right, and we talked about how much does it cost to live in Hawaii, these types of things, I love to show you the numbers and exactly what we're seeing. So in this chart, all right, I'm gonna walk you through it. It's gonna be very quick and painless, all right? So on the top left side, I've checked off rentals. And now this is, again, only what I can see in the MLS. If a landlord rents on their own privately, I can't see that, right? They rent it off of Craigslist or whatever they do. I can't see that. I can only see what is listed and gone through the MLS, so rentals. They said 2,500 about as I'm looking at this right now, sales price and I have it median down here on the bottom left. I have the median and then up top, you can see again that I have a two bedroom checked off. OK, and I have one bathroom or fewer. So a two bedroom, one bathroom. Now on the right side here, you can see that over the last year, that's what this timeline is. All right. Over the last year, I can change it to like the last three years if you want to see how rent has been going up over the last three years. But I have it at the last year. All right. This is the last six months. So over the last six months, homes that have been rented that we can see from the MLS, all right, homes that have been rented on the, or the median is 2000, all right, which is an 11.1% increase, okay? That means half the homes over the last six months have rented above 2000 and half the homes have rented below, all right? And that's the two bedroom, one bathroom, all right, coverage right there. Now, if I change this to average, you can see that it's still pretty close. 2049 was the average. OK, so I'm going to go back to median and I'm going to take off the two bedroom and the one bathroom factor. OK, now over the last six months. All right. July as of July of 2022 on the right side here, I'm going to zoom it in for you so you can see that. OK, this is the median over the last six months. OK, as of July of 2022, let me make sure I double check. Uh, yep, median. OK. Median over the last six months, 2,350. That's an 11.9% increase. Okay. So that's all. All right. That's all rentals. I don't have any other parameters checked except rentals. If I switch it to average, it goes up to the average being 2,636. Okay. And that's an 11.3% increase as of July of 2022 over the last six months. Okay. Now, if we change it to three months, you're looking at right pretty close, not not a too drastic of a change there. So a little bit off with what they said in the article. But yes, it is getting more expensive to rent. You can even see the trend line right there over the last year. If you haven't been paying attention, the economy has been doing a lot of crazy things, which so have the interest rates, which so have the home prices. All right. So not just the rent. We already talked about the rent. Home prices have been doing crazy things. So for the last two years, pretty much, they've just seen just these crazy astronomical increases. Right. It's really just been absolutely bonkers now that things are starting to shift all right and if you haven't watched our real estate update video then you definitely should again i'm a real estate agent i look at this stuff every single day now it's starting to shift all right and it's starting to slow down okay because of the higher interest rates all right and because of the market starting to shift you're really disqualifying a lot of buyers not necessarily disqualifying it's just that their budget has changed all right interest rates having a high interest rate does impact your qualification so if you don't have the cash or maybe you want to wait a little bit to see what's going to happen, do I recommend that? No. OK, I do not. The market is starting to change. We are starting to see more inventory come on the market. When we say inventory as real estate agents, right, we mean more houses are coming on the market for sale, meaning buyers have more options, meaning buyers are shifting to or it's shifting to where the buyers then have the advantage home buyers have the advantage in when this market is shifting so historically speaking or data speaking yes inventory is still considered to be low we're not at the three or four months of inventory that we were used to seeing in a normal market but what happened over the last two years people started to think that that was the new norm okay and they wanted some people wanted it to be the new norm okay 
we needed this shift, all right, we need to get back to normalcy and what we typically see in a market that is normal. So inventory is definitely impacted and so is days on market, all right? When you're searching homes online, you should be checking days on market. How long has this home been sitting on the market? Initially, when we think that, we start to think, oh my God, what's wrong with this home? Well, nothing may be wrong with the home. There just may be more choices out there all right, for home buyers, all right? And then there may be not or not enough home buyers that can qualify for that home, whichever the case may be. So we are starting to notice things slow down as far as the frenzy, okay? Not as many times or not as many homes seeing like 30 offers, all right? I've actually been looking at um, homes. I was looking at these homes earlier today and a lot of the homes, you know, 14 days, 20 days, 50 days. It's like, wow, things really are starting to shift. Back, you know, seven, eight months ago, maybe even, yes, yeah, about seven, eight months ago, home would hit the market in three days or less. They had an offer or they had 15 offers, all right? And then they were going into escrow pretty quickly. Not the case any longer, all right, is that's what we're starting to see with this market slowing down. Some other things that you need to be aware of is that really Hawaii was one of the last states to really bring back sense of normalcy. All right, now I don't have any like factual data around that, all right? But just hearing, I have a lot of contacts, right? All around the United States networking right friends all over the country right and talking about what's going on i have family down in, in you know florida which has been as free as ever um so they're like i they don't even remember what it's like to to live how we were i mean i was talking to my brother who lives in florida and uh he was just like i forgot that that stuff even was still going on i'm like yeah out here it was uh but we are starting to return to a more normal uh environment right getting that sense of normalcy back and one of the biggest things is for our kids all right our kids I can't tell you how my son, my oldest son, who is in elementary school, was impacted, all right, by everything that was happening, right? Initially, when it first happened, right? And then he's homeschooled, and I'm like, I'm not a teacher, but I'll do my best. And then we're working at home, and then, you know, then they're going back, like, part-time, and then, then it was, they can come back full-time if they're all wearing, you know, the, the mask, and then now finally school just started all right they just started back this week all right on august 1st and i believe mask was optional in most uh, public schools i'm not picking a side i'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do all right that's all up to you i'm just making you aware so i actually wanted to show you this article right here as you can see right here in this article it says hawaii students finally returning to classrooms without restrictions okay and then they even have a little video here, which is pretty cool. A sixth grade science teacher looking forward to more collaboration just because with the social distancing in the classroom, it's kind of difficult to do science labs. So kind of excite them about that. All right. For the first time in two and a half years, 160,000 Hawaii public school students will be returning to the classroom next week without having mask or social distance. All right. So finally get to hear them, see their whole faces uh, instead of from here all right because a lot of people were still doing um, online schooling as well so it is starting to get to the return for normalcy um, especially for our kids which i'm super happy to hear about and especially for my oldest who is in elementary school so really cool stuff there As we just talked about return to normalcy, look, tourism is spiking. And I don't even know if this is returning to normalcy because it seems like it's getting crazy. Like a lot of people have just been waiting, right, for everything to get um, back to normal so that they could come here. It's It's been wild. There's been stuff in the news um, about Maui's airport being just over, like I don't want to say overrun. That sounds like a derogatory term, but Maui's airport has been absolutely nuts with the lines. And so a lot of times, too, like if I travel or go to places and I'm hanging out with a friend or whatever, I go, hey, how the, how the airport's here? Like, is it pretty smooth? Can I get through security pretty fast? All that type of stuff. Or it's like, should I be at that airport like two hours early kind of thing? Well, Hawaii, whether it's Maui, whether it's Honolulu, whichever one, um, I definitely recommend getting there early. All right. Every time we fly out, we're like, Phew, glad we got here when we did, because uh, if we didn't, we'd be running right now. So you definitely want to get to the airport earlier. But I wanted to talk to you about that tourism thing. All right. So, yes, the tourism has been spiking. It's been crazy. Talk to you about that Maui airport thing. But I wanted to show you a little bit more data because I love that stuff. Right. So let's show you a little bit more about what's going on. Checking out some data from HawaiiTourismAuthority.org. We can pull up some statistics. Whew, big word for me there. Um, some statistics. And uh, we're going to look at our monthly visitor statistics. So I actually went ahead and pulled this art, uh, PDF up. You guys can go check out these PDFs. And it, right here, it says even Oahu. All right. Island highlights. So Oahu uh, has 
or there were 437,769 visitors to Oahu in June of 2022 compared to June of 2019. That's a 22% decrease. All right. Now, honestly, like you can barely tell <laughs> um, that and those numbers aren't too far off. It seems like a lot more people are here. Um, when the whole thing was happening, it was weird to go to Waikiki and it be a ghost town. It was absolutely weird. Now, when you walk down there, you're shoulder to shoulder. You're going to be bumping into people, those types of things. But it even says uh, visitors or visitor spending was $787.9 million compared to $738.1 million. That's a 6%, 6.8% increase. All right. And the, the, or the average daily consensus, I don't know why I can't talk right now. The average daily consensus on Oahu was 110,855 visitors in June of 2022 compared to 128 in June of 2019. So it's saying through the first half of 2022, there were 2.2 plus million visitors to Oahu compared to just over 3 million. So that's about a 25% decrease. But again, not too far off as we start to get back to normalcy and more people come. So for the first half, total visitor spending was $4 billion, down just a little bit. Maui, again, Maui was has been nuts as well. So I always like to show you guys those things and really so you can see for yourself. We just covered some things of what's really going on in Hawaii. So no matter what you see on the news, what you see on social media, we like to bring the receipts. We like to bring the data and show you those things here so that you can really see firsthand and make these things uh, decisions for yourself and really digest them, okay? Again, we're not picking sides or anything like that. This is all information for you. So what do you do with this information? Well, again, it's it's awareness and it's knowledge, all right? Hey, I'm gonna be coming there. Shoot, I gotta prepare for electric going up, right? I gotta prepare for all these things happening that are going on around there. So again, knowledge is power and being able to know these things. And hey, look, you're gonna help somebody else get some more knowledge if you hit that like button, because that helps other people find these helpful videos. Hit the subscribe button. And the easiest way to get notified when we do put out a new video is to hit that notification bell. That's going to send you a, a little notification saying, hey, look, Living in Hawaii put out a new video. You might want to go check it out. We appreciate all that. If you are thinking about making the move to Hawaii or you're already making that move or you're already here, all right, and you're trying to find the place that best fits your lifestyle, you can reach out like so many others do. Shoot us a text, send us a call, send me an email, slide in my DMs. However you're comfortable, we got your back when it comes to living in Hawaii. We got tons of other videos on this channel, vlog tours where we're out in the communities and you can really see the communities, what it really looks like, the parks, the homes, all that and more on this channel. All those are going to start popping up for you right now.